I Am the Specialist of the Strange, written by Dakota Franson, narrated by Douglas MacArthur, published by Bald and Bonkers Network, LLC. Section 7, Becoming the Specialist, Part 2. December 2019. The hunt for infinite Earths was underway, an experimental procedure to utilize simple ghost hunting methods, a bit of magic, and clever planning to make contact with beings from other worlds, possibly even alternate Earths. I knew that it would be unwise to simply just leave an open invite, that simply invites too much risk, and the situation over in China already is seeding enough misfortune for darker beings to be roaming about more freely. I anticipate this will only escalate. In regards to the experiment, after some careful research, I have picked three potentially viable targets to focus on. Setting the intention on these individuals would help prevent interference. A part of me felt the need to get an outside assist in order to get the necessary strength to reach off-world. An immediate instinct was to research lore surrounding angels, settling on Archangel Metatron for his insights to worldly happenings. It would seem the angel with a true face the size of the earth would also have sights on alternate dimensions. I would learn later that the Metatron may in fact be a sort of natural frequency in line with source a direct line to all other frequencies. As for my targets, I needed ones who had some sort of visitation or interaction with this earth, and it be a previously documented case. Otherwise, it increases the odds of infiltration. For this experiment, I picked three individuals that would fit the bill nicely, if they were in fact real. Vrilon, an ET claiming to be connected to the Ashtar Galactic Command that hijacked Saturday morning cartoons in 1977 in the UK witnessed by hundreds. Val Thor, a Venusian who spent five years living in the Pentagon, crew of five, including wife, Jillian John, censored, a potential comic book character come to life, writer's based character on really occult practices and swear to this day, they have seen him out and about in the flesh. Each individual was carefully researched and selected on the fact their individual cases held multiple eyewitnesses. Even some physical evidence of interaction in our world. That measure alone spoke to increased odds of interaction. By using Metatron as an interdimensional satellite dish, this in theory would allow stronger and more stable communication. What other rules did I have to consider? Hard to say, not like there's much of a manual on these things. But here are corresponding the results. If Vrilon could hear me, me let me go to voicemail, so to speak. I have come to learn years later that the Ashtar Galactic Command doesn't interact with civilians, so it is quite possible that no interaction was because I was some random individual. When contacting Val Thor, the communications seemed a bit more active. Some audio tapes were erased, and a small spherical craft showed itself while I was visiting the local wind farm with family. Some following audio sessions done after the corrupted files were discovered indicated a hostile exchange, but matters quickly settled. The strangest of it all, faint audio sessions, voices matching the description of the character, but a single recording left through an anomalous source of static left a message stating clear as day, if you can hear me, censored wants you. Much to my surprise, censored was the most successful contact. And he has made appearances on a few other instances when a case has turned south, offering up his skill set. I approached a couple of the writers involved with the original storylines, and they advised me to be careful as Censored is not a man to be trusted and will screw me over the moment it benefits him. March, April, 2020. Earth, United States, Idaho, North Carolina. As COVID lockdowns started to be enacted in my home state, I was asked to appear in a paranormal parody show called Conspiracy Cases. It was something a little different from my usual calls, so I went ahead and made the drive. It was only two hours away and it gave me a chance to have a weekend away. Filming was only a few hours at an old bomb shelter in Boise, and on my days off, no better time to do it. Dakota on location for conspiracy cases. Plus this gave me a chance to visit a local zoo and go back to the old Idaho State Penitentiary to revisit where I learned there was life after death. Being that I was on my own for the weekend, I wanted a chance to go visit some places in Boise I didn't normally get a chance to when I was with my family, and the women just wanted to go shopping. 
I don't mind a shopping trip, but there's so much more to do. While I was deemed an essential worker and able to still work through the pandemic, I decided to start looking to making documentaries from home to hone my skills and maybe try something new. Being I had personal interest in from previous encounters was brought to the forefront of my mind as a spike in reports of him making an appearance. Figures that the world would go insane and he would emerge to watch it all unfold. During my research, a post on Reddit made the comparisons between the censored to a being from Brenton mythology known as the Anku, which is essentially a type of Grim Reaper. When I went down this rabbit hole, one of the origin stories for the Anku was that the being was none other than the firstborn son of Adam and Eve, Cain from Cain and Abel. When I read this, I could swear I heard a maniacal laughter, almost like something out of a movie. A phone call came through on a hotline I had briefly set up right as I was coming home at about three in the morning. A father out of North Carolina was frantically calling any paranormal-based groups and exorcists looking for help regarding a being that was focusing its attention on the man's then three-year-old son. The second I heard on the voicemail that was left that a child was involved, I immediately called the father back. An almost four-hour conversation detailing nearly all the cliches, smells, scratches, voices, shadows, a dead room where life seemed to be drained by anyone who entered ramped up in intensity when the voice of what sounded like a five-year-old boy say, put down the fucking phone or I'll kill you, bitch. Needless to say, I was fully convinced this was a legitimate call. I got more information from the father. He detailed that this being had apparently been around for a while since the father was in his teens and had been offering up a position as a general of some army. Being that there was an obvious effort on the being's behalf to establish some kind of rapport, I asked the father if it ever said its name. The father, not knowledgeable about biblical names, did not understand the significance of the name, but I knew it well. The being identified itself as Cain. Naturally, having the world's first murderer hanging around would be unsettling for anyone. I calmed the father and sent him detailed instructions to break the ties with Cain as he finished up the move. So far, no further incidents have been reported and the family is in a new house here in Idaho. Within the same week of this revelation, a visitor appeared in my bedroom right as I was getting home from work. The time was just after 3 a.m. I was pretty much just beat and heading straight for bed. As I walked into my bedroom, I watched a woman walk out of what looked like a closing portal. Just feeling the energy coming off of her was overwhelming. It wasn't that she was anything negative. In fact, quite the opposite. She was very motherly. Her frequency denoted that she was ancient. She identified herself as Eve, as in the Eve from the Garden of Eden. She felt the need to show me something in relation to Cain, something she felt would help me understand who and what I was up against. Eve placed her hand on my temple, instantly showing me the Garden of Eden through her eyes. Cain was not Adam's biological son. Adam knew it and was the first abusive stepfather. Cain was manipulated into killing his brother, siding over with darker forces. Who was that he sided with? He seemed familiar, almost identical to the dragon man I saw the day my stepmother stabbed me. That was so long ago. Eve seemed to know me, know about me, know that I was someone who could probably help shift the tide. Why? Because according to her, I was very similar to her son, but became something better like she hoped he would. November, December, 2020. Close to Christmas, my grandmother and mother were trying to think of some kind of plan to get my younger cousin, censored, away from her mother. There have been disturbing hints of some nasty abuse taking place at the hand of my aunt's latest boy toy and alleged father of her two youngest children. They lived in censored at the time, about a three hour drive from my location. Visits were rare. All I knew for sure was that my aunt's children were not making attempts at their own lives before the stepfather came in. Well, within 24 hours, censored, called my grandmother and asked to come stay with her because her mother threw her into an insane asylum for saying her stepfather molested her and told censored that she could not come home. This was after censored had reached out twice to get help because her mother was letting this piece of shit hurt her. 
We get censored. We discover how much has been going on. Censored reached out a couple times before to try telling us about the abuse, pushing her to where she contemplated suicide. All messages forwarded to the authorities immediately. Conveniently, I was banned from my aunts shortly after. But the extent of what Censored had revealed honestly made it so it was probably for the best. I never saw my aunt again. Censored was released from the mental health facility for a two-week break, which she spent at my house. Apparently, it was meant to be a bit of a holiday for long-term patients so they can spend time with family and gather their things. My aunt didn't even let my cousin have that much. This whole mess was heartbreaking to watch. When Gash censored left, I was honestly heartbroken. She was the one of my cousins I was closest to, and knowing that someone deliberately let this happen would have made for any crimes of passion defense moot if I were to do something. I needed a distraction, something to get my mind off of how much censored needed help, but I couldn't do anything. I got a notification on Twitter about an international paranormal group, censored, looking for members, and figured what the hell. I signed up, quickly rose through the ranks, then, well, I witnessed a battle between literal heaven and hell.